musicians in bars getting beer. Today's guest, Glenn Drover, talking about Walls of Blood Imperium. Release date, February 22nd, 2019. Let's get straight to it. Tell us about the new stuff. Well, basically, it's uh, an album that I started working on probably about six years ago. And the idea was basically to have ten songs on an album with ten different singers, ten different, you know, singers in the industry that that I'd like to work with and maybe I have have not done that in the past. Haven't worked with in the past rather. Right. So that's how it started and I just kind of worked on it sporadically over that time period. I know it's a long time, but it was a, a combination of that and also to some of the singers, you know, they would have Maybe when I asked them, they were on tour, and I'd have to wait, you know, a series of months before I would get their their track, and you know, so it was it was a process. And like I said, I just kind of did it, you know, kind of at my leisure, and and apparently, and um, and the the majority of the of the of the, uh, of the recordings were done in my studio, and then of course the singers. They did them in their studios or a studio that they went to visit, you know, to to do the track. Mm -hmm. As you know, these days, a lot of people have their own studio situations in their house and stuff because we can these days. And um, it just turned out to, you know, not only did, you know, did everybody do a stellar job with the um, their their tracks, but uh, the recording, the production came out really well uh, for all the different singers. Never had any problem with anybody. Uh with lack of quality or whatever. Right. So it just, it just worked out really, really well. Um, and then I had session guys for, for drums and bass and also Joe from, um, from Fate's Warning played a couple of tracks, a couple of bass tracks on the album. Cool. And, and I did pretty much everything, all, all the guitars and all the keyboards and, and that. Sean wrote a lot of the lyrics on the album, actually about, I think, eight or seven or eight uh, songs out of ten on the album. Was seven, wow! My brother Sean, yeah. and um, yeah. Well, so that's, that's interesting. That's basically, that's basically the story behind it. So it's done all over the world, basically, and brought to the center of the universe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so you, you and your brother have worked together before. We've worked together. Yeah, we've been working since doing stuff since God, since we we're very young. Mm -hmm. You know. Formed a, a band called Eidolon back in the early '90s and did a lot of albums with Metal Blade. We uh, were, of course, both part of Megadeth for several years. Mm -hmm. You know, and on and on and on. Yeah. And uh, do you want to do any other name dropping of who's going to be on this album? Um, yeah, there's uh, there's there's uh, a lot of uh, great singers that were that uh, went up with the album. Chuck Billy from Testament, um, Todd from Queensrÿche. Kenny Bossy, who was in Metallium, now he's with Firewind. He plays it. He actually sings on about three songs. Didn't quite work out the way I wanted. Where I was going to do ten songs, ten singers. It wound up being seven singers and ten songs. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Um, that's okay. And jeez, uh, who else is on there? Uh, Dan from Striker. It's a Canadian band. Great singer. Great band. Um, uh, Nils K. Ru from uh, Pagan's Mind. He was also. We also did an album with him with the Idol on stuff. So, good, uh, good lineup of, of, uh, of singers on the album. That's cool. Has the recording itself evolved over the six years, or, or do you want to talk about more how you've evolved since, you know, since maybe starting this project, or even through your career? Through the project, I would say it's, you know, I, I, it's, you know, trying to make an album cohesive. You don't want to go in too, too many different directions, uh, which is what I wanted to do with this one. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't say... I, mean, I guess we're always improving at something along the way. Um, I like to think that I keep getting better as an engineer because you, you're always continuously learning, learning new stuff, you know, through trial and error or whatever, um, using new equipment. So there's always, I guess, uh, uh, improvements along the way sure. uh, as far as those things go. Um, and the writing style, basically the same. Yeah, it, it's, it doesn't really... It's, it's you know... There's, it's pretty much all just metal. It's not. There's nothing that's, you know, out of, coming out of left field. It's all pretty much the same style, and you know, you got some different singers on there, you know, with different styles. But you know, it, it's, 
they were able to to fit whatever was going on with the particular song I had in mind for them with their style of, of singing. So, and it all worked out really well. Mm-hmm. So, really, ha- really happy about it. So, that's awesome. So, do you want to compare it to anything that you've done in the past? I don't know if you could. I mean, you know, I, the style of music is it's metal, but I mean, as far as like a particular album I did or something, no, there's really. There really isn't. I mean, I probably the closest, you know, maybe some of the latter idol on stuff that we did. You know, there's probably bits and pieces of that that will remind you of that. Um, but uh, not not like any of the Megadeth or, or King Diamond stuff. It's not. It's a little bit different than that. Yeah. But I think it would be closest to that, the idol on stuff I mentioned. So yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm really and, proud of it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, do you want to talk about any other historical uh, highlights? I, you were just mentioning your idol on. That band, we ended up doing quite a few albums, actually. And um, we never, we, we didn't get to the point where we, we you know, became a touring band. We were just primarily a recording band. We played a few festivals and stuff like that, which was great. But we never got to that point where, you know, which we wanted to reach. But saying that, you know, if it had not been for, uh, for that band, then... I wouldn't have ended up joining Megadeth, and you know, so a lot of things wouldn't have happened had it not been for that band. So it was, it was good that it happened, and we did that, you know, because it led to other things. But you know, but the, the band itself, we didn't, you know, we played, like I said, <clears throat> a few festivals, but you know, like like Valken, we played Valken, and uh, and a few others, which was great. But it never, unfortunately, like I said, didn't get to that point where you know we became an actual touring band and. And did that whole thing. So yeah, how did it lead then to you getting into Megadeth? Basically, we played a, uh, uh, the Vodka Festival in Germany in 2003, and my brother met somebody, a fan, on the grounds of the festival, and they swapped contact info. Um, just about you know, we were talking about different bands and and so forth, and I guess it was like, yeah, you know, just give me your email and I'll, I'll send you the you know a link to this thing or you know or whatever. And so they they you know kept in contact, and one day uh, I guess he had heard from the webmaster that, that was doing Megadeth at the time. And he probably still is to this day. Um, that uh, day was putting the band back together, and then he, I was referred <clears throat> for the position. Cool. And so it was him, that guy that uh, mm. was the key person that got the, the, the ball rolling had it not been for him making the recommendation it never would have happened random fan at Mac, at uh, Bakken right exactly <laughs> so and, and like I said if it had not been for the band that we, you know we it wouldn't have happened that way obviously mm-hmm. so had we not played that festival with that band then you know we wouldn't have I wouldn't have done that and then Sean you know wouldn't of course joined and you know it's pretty interesting when you think about that sure is so how did that, you want to describe your life during those days, during Megadeth days? It was obviously a very exciting time, you know, initially for me to get into the band was, was crazy, you know, so that was a, you know, very, very exciting time, and then, you know, starting the rehearsals in Arizona, which is what we did before that first tour, we were in rehearsals for about a couple of weeks, before um, we started that North American tour, that was in 2004, and, um, you know, then there was problems with Nick Menza, who had came come back to the band. And uh, so he was let go during the rehearsals, and then my brother came in. So then you get, you know, here's my brother sharing this experience, and you know, and it was it was it was great. We have, you know, I have lots of great memories from that that time. You know, meeting so many great people, and people I looked up to, and meeting a lot of cool fans along the way, and um, you know, and seeing seeing the world for the you know a good yeah. chunk of the world for the first time, going to Japan for the first time, with my brother in Australia, and and all kinds of. All kinds of places. So touring the world, of course, and any uh, memorable, I mean, you mentioned Japan and Australia, but any other mm-hmm. memorable gigs that you, uh, you know, you felt like you nailed it or? Yeah, for sure. Like the Monsters of Rock, which is called the Download Festival, I believe now. Mm-hmm. That's in the UK. That was, that was amazing. Both experiences of playing there were amazing. We played there twice and, and, and both times it was, I think the first time there was 80,000 people and the next time we played it was 100,000. Wow. <laughs> so that was um, that was amazing. Just from as far as you could see, people were just going nuts. And it was just really, really electric. Mm-hmm. You know, the air was just, it was just, you could feel it. It was just so exciting. And it was, uh, that, that's, that was an amazing experience. But there was, I mean, there was a lot of shows that were fun like that. But that would have to be the pinnacle. Great. 
So if I had to pick one, you know? Yeah. Any other kind of anecdotes from the road? Oh, God. If you can nail just one. And if you can tell it in front of people. Any, any, <laughs> yeah, you know, what? We, we were actually, to be honest, we were pretty milk and cookies, I think, just comparison to a lot of bands out there. But Good to um, it just, you know, to me, but, uh, it, it does seem, you know, like a dream come true touring with your brother in a major metal band. Uh, well, yeah, for sure. Like I said, that, I mean, that, that in every moment, is, uh, <laughs> you know, just, uh, I you know, remember so many great times going out with me. It would usually be me and, and, and my brother and Willie, who's my guitar tech. We were all really tight, you know. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we, we'd always go out you know, wherever we were and, and tour around. My big thing was always going and, <clears throat> and seeing if there was a record shop somewhere, wherever we were, you know, to see if I could find a record store. Cool. You know, because that's always been my thing, you know, buying albums and CDs and, and stuff. So that was always my thing. And I'd always usually drag my brother along and, uh, and, and Willie, you know. So I have a lot of good memories of, of doing stuff like that and, you know, just going out and just, eating at cool places and, you know, hanging out. And that was, uh, I can't really think of, like I said, anything that like, that's the tour in life. When you're in different cities, you just want to kind of get grounded again, I guess. Right. Yeah. 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 And you're working. Well, even it is, you, you know, it's such a fast paced thing. And, and, you know, we would obviously do those things more so on the day off, obviously. Sure. And, you know, and just to kind of find some kind of normality, you know, it, it's, whether it was just even just going to a mall or, you know what I mean? Or just, sure. we, if, if it was a bowling alley, we'd go and do that, you know, just, <laughs> just, just simple stuff, you know, you know, just to get away from the, the fast paced thing that you're on show day. So, uh, that's pretty cool. So what about studio experiences? Have, you know, you you say you're doing a lot of that from home. Was there any, uh, was there any session that really stood out in your mind? Yeah. Um, when we were recording the album that I was on, it's called United Abominations for Megadeth. We were in Hollywood. It was actually, that album was recorded in, I think, three or four different studios. Um, two different studios in England uh, and two in California. One of them was uh, somewhere in Hollywood. And right down the street, not too far from the studio, which was owned by, that's the, it was called the Steakhouse, the studio, which is owned by Steve Lukather by, uh, from Toto. Oh, yeah. Guitar. Um, and, um, one of the, I, I can't remember, it was one of the engineers or somebody there was saying, yeah, you know, down the street, there's, uh, is where Randy Rhodes used to teach his mom's school. I'm like, cool. no way. And he said, yeah, I used to be a student. I was one of Randy's students. Hmm. And I, of course I didn't believe him at first, but it turned out to be you know, totally true. Hmm. And then, um, took me over it took me and my brother over to the uh the school and we went in i met randy's brother and, and his mom wow and uh i just seen you know the rooms where he used to teach in and uh and all that crazy stuff which was mind-blowing you know that's great to see that it was i, I was that was wasn't expected to be doing that that day so we took a break and went over me him and sean and, and seeing that school where uh, where Randy used to teach, and, and like I said, first why, well, and the crazy thing about the place was, uh, it looked like it, they hadn't touched anything since Randy had died. Oh my you gosh! Know, back in, in 1982, they, they still had a rotary phone, um, the, the panels on the walls, and, and and the curtains. I mean, it was it, it was it was like you know stepping back in time, a good two or three decades. Wow, still Randy's Which room. was interesting, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, old school answering machine, or did they even have one, but I remember seeing a rotary phone, I'm not joking. It's amazing. And, um, totally, like, totally old school, which was really interesting to see that. Did I that thought it was neat, you know, I thought it was really neat, so. Yeah, did that inspire you for that recording session? No, no, <laughs> it was, um, not really, it was just a, you know, it was actually kind of sad, um yet exciting at the same time uh -huh. because it was neat to see that but yet it was sad because it really hit home and you know the guy's dead and you know here there's his, his mom was there and you yeah. know it's so it's kind of it kind of hit home that way i think a little bit but didn't change no, your plan not, no 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 of course not no but randy no. was uh obviously a big influence on you do you want to talk about any other influences yeah yeah he, he was as 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 was uh quite a few players 
You want to talk about any other guys that really uh, influenced you? Um, well, I mean, there was, you know, growing up, I guess some of the key guys being Van Malmsteen and, and George Lynch was a big, a big uh, influence on me for a long time. Um, God, but many different guitar players for different reasons, but those guys are definitely sure. key ones, you know, as, as David Gilmore for certain reasons too. Sure. So a lot of different guys, but those are definitely, you know, those guys are definitely right up there. Yeah. So that's three big ones. And, um, yeah. you, you want to do a, a desert Island album game or something like that? Sure. So top three, let's say. Three. Oh my god. <laughs> just, would be tough. just start wherever you want. I, okay, I'll take all. I guess Pink Floyd, Animals. Um, cool. Just listen to that today. Yeah, it's a good one. Black Sabbath, Mob Rules. I'll take that. And um, Jesus. <laughs> um, You're not limited to only one more. But if I had to, it would be. Uh, um, I'll probably take Machine Head, I guess. Cool. I was just thinking that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely going to be there for sure. Yeah, that's so yeah, cool. I'll take I'll take those three. Awesome. Do you have any like revelations about new music, new metal, or the industry no. in general? No, I wish I did, but I don't. I I try to remain optimistic that something will come up that will give every, everybody and everything a kick in the ass and, and bring some serious inspiration back into music. Because we really, really need it badly. You know, the new generation's not getting into playing instruments as much because there's really nothing to inspire them. There's nobody coming out to inspire them, you know? What, what is Adele going to do? Mm -hmm. What's, you know, I mean, it's that's, that's what we're faced with, which is really a drag. And um, that's why I really hope all the old bands that are older bands that are sticking around or um, that are that are still out there, stay around as long as possible. All right, real guitar playing bands and drummers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, it's just you know, it's just kind of unfortunate. I don't know if, if we've covered all the ground, and there's nothing left to. I don't know. You know, I, I, I to be honest with you, I hear little bits and pieces of things here and there, which most times, unfortunately, doesn't do a whole lot for me. So I tend to be listening to a lot of older stuff. But um, saying that, I mean, there still, still are some really good bands out there, but I'm not really hearing a ton that, that's like, wow, what's this? You know, this is really inspiring and new, and I'm not, I'm not really hearing anything like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, But I don't think it's it makes a difference either way. And so how are you releasing this? The label in uh, Germany is uh, Meadowville, mm -hmm. and... It's being distributed in Canada through Universal Music, mm -hmm. okay. and it's going to be available on vinyl, CD, and of course the old digital download. Cool. And uh, how do we find you online? Facebook is usually the the, the, the best one. Um, I don't have a, a, a website set up anymore, uh, like a personal one, but I probably will make a kind of a band page for or, or a project page for the uh, the Walls of Blood uh, yeah. release. So. Uh, but for now, it's just it's just me. That's uh, my personal one that's up there. And I know you answer your fans and you do personal things like, um, you know, webcasts, that sort of thing. Um, I have in the past. Yeah. I, 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 I don't do them as much now, but I, I did have an opportunity for a little while where I was doing that, and that was fun. Um, it would be nice to actually do that again. You know, but uh, you have to have the right opportunity to do it properly, you know? Sure do. And, and it's fun to watch you playing guitar on the, you know, just right there in your room. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I just, I just thought it was just kind of, you know, I'd go on there and play like, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine songs and talk a little bit in between and like for an hour or something like that. But it would be cool to get that uh, something going like that. It has to be someone that would, you know, a company that could take care of doing that properly and promote it and, and set the whole thing up. Sure. So, all right. So, dude, thanks for being on Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. This has been a great episode. First one on Skype. I hope it works out. Yeah, no problem. It was, uh, it was fun. Thanks, Glenn. Um, so, yeah, stay, yeah, stay in touch, man. We'll do Musicians in Bars Getting Beer. We'll call it Not Getting Beer. I know we're, this is the first one I've tried on Skype. I want to thank Glenn for calling in on Skype today. It's been an honor talking with you, sir. And uh, 
Good luck with the new release, Walls of Blood Imperium.